Hello and welcome to the Slingshot channel. Today we are revisiting uh, the ventilator, the improvised ventilator uh, for the Corona crisis. So again, use this battery drill and this transmission to press on something that you put in here. And this is just a placeholder for an ambu bag. Why are we revisiting this? Well, let me explain. Because today we have a guest. Hello. Simon Jankowski. <laughs> and Simon is a professional uh, coach for, for what exactly? Uh, for CPR trainings. <laughs> Someone calls you up and says, hey, can you train my team you know, to give proper CPR and everything? And then you would come to, the, to that company and teach everybody. Exactly. That's a certify this and so that they fulfill yes. German regulation and, and all this. Of course, exactly that. The reason why Simon is here is because of my apparatus that a lot of people uh, discussed. I'm actually pleased that that happened. And of course, there's been a lot of questions. Does this make sense? Is this a proper ventilator? And so, so Simon contacted me and offered his professional opinion. So together, we're going to look at the machine again. And you brought all the test equipment, like, you know, puppets and everything. Yes. So you will be able in the end, after we're finished, to say, does this have any purpose? What are the advantages? What are the disadvantages? What can you do with something like that? And what can you not do with something like well, that? Well, I hope so, yes. OK, then let's get to work. So this is a test puppet. And it has all kinds of digits here. So this thing will tell us if we are doing everything right. Exactly. And so this is specifically made for instructions like this. OK, so and as you see, there's already this kind of uh, device here in the mouth of the patient. Yes. And this is so that he doesn't block the... Uh, the, the, that the tongue doesn't block the throat, exactly. Okay, it, so it keeps the uh, tongue up in front, so we can uh, push the air through the airways uh, without interruptions. Okay, and normally now what you could do is you could just give mouth-to-mouth -mouth, uh, respiration. Yeah, so by that, example, yes. And, and the, the bag that you brought is actually a replacement for exactly that, right? So yes, it you, is. you no longer have to use your own mouth. Uh, this is more clean, more, uh, more hygienic, and then you use this bottle. And I understand this tube normally isn't a part of it. So this is normally directly connected to this here. Yes, Okay. Is. And then you probably also can connect like a filter or maybe maybe uh, oxygen. An oxygen tank, bottle. yes, mm -hmm. with a regulator. And, and this thing then really is the pump, right? It is. And you're supposed to pump with this with your hand. Yes. Okay. Just like Okay. A shaky here. That's how you pump, okay. Mm -hmm. And then you can see the level here and it must be in this green window, right? Yes, So that between is five and 600 milliliters. Okay, so that's how it's normally done. And this is what we're gonna simulate. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so this is the position that you're supposed to have. Standing behind the patient, pressing the mask on his face. Yes. And now we begin to pump. As we can see, it's not sufficient. Not sufficient, but it already works. Okay. Is this the frequency that you would go for? Uh, I guess we would choose 10, around 10 uh, compressions per minute. Really. Okay, so, so now we're in the green. So this works, right? It does. Let's, let's see what happens when we go down in speed a little bit. It still works, perfectly. Yeah. It's definitely enough. That's perfect. Okay. So you would say this has passed the test, right? It does. <laughs> of course. Okay, Simon. Now we have a new challenge. Yes. And this is using this thing uh, for ventilation of a baby. Yes. Of course, we have to barely touch uh, the... Uh, respiration bag. Okay, so uh, first we go down in volume here very much so that we can adjust it. Okay, and the frequency is it supposed to be faster or slower than in a grown man? Uh, in the CPR, it's exactly the same oh, okay. 30 times uh, mm -hmm. compressing the chest and two times uh, ventilations uh, in exchanges. Okay.
Okay. Okay, so then I'll just give it a go. Is this already too much? Because I can see it here. Yeah, we can see it, and that's really a little too much. Okay, then we go down a little bit more. Uh, even this is too much. Okay, <laughs> we go down. Is it still too much? Let's do the least most you can. Okay. This is the smallest volume that smallest I can do. Volume. Of course I can go down, but then I would have to change the yeah, we, wheel. We can see the chest moving a little bit. Yeah, so this is already sufficient. This is sufficient, okay. Because if I put this up to full volume, it will probably explode the bag, right? Should we do this? The bag <laughs> or the baby? <laughs> Let's see what. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Here's the first malfunction. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Here you can breathe. Really <laughs> no, let's not kill that baby. No. <laughs> so you would say this has the flexibility also to be used for a baby. Yes. And of course, since this can be adjusted freely, like a small child would get a little more than that and then a teenager would get almost as much as the full grown man. Yes. So adjustability is check. Perfect. <laughs> cool. Okay, Simon, it's time to uh, look at the results for the verdict. <laughs> so maybe we should start with the positive things. There's enough negative things, I'm sure, but let's start with it. What do you think, what, what really works on this machine? What works good is that we can change the volume control from a baby volume to the volume for a, a grown-up man yeah, 50 to 600 milliliters so volume check volume <laughs> check definitely and then what about the speed yeah we can change the speed uh, from i guess 10 to 20 times per minute 20 uh, pressure bumps per minute that should be enough for everything we would use it for okay so this works so these are the parts that are working. <laughs> what, do you, what would you want? What would you miss from this here to be suitable for a typical emergency situation? I think it would be useful to have a switch either for the foot to stamp on it. So we press 30 times and then we respirate two times. So and just two okay. times. Okay. So what you're, what you're trying to tell me is that this version here is completely useless because the constant kind of. pumping is uh, not something that you would want. A constant pumping is uh, would be used in hospitals yeah, for niffing but here we don't use it in the ambulance. Okay so this means and of course for for using it in the hospital it's way too primitive right. Yes, for the hospital high versions tech. you would want all kinds of controls like check the oxygen level in the blood and check all the pressure. pressures, everything, all the volume control, everything like this. So it would yes. be way more complex and something that I could not do with my simple... I guess. Okay, but you think that if I would put this in a portable box and, yeah. uh, and also give you a, a switch that you could just press when you need the air, then that would actually be beneficial. I think so, yeah. And you would have it, uh, you would have to have it certified. Yeah, well, I have no such plans. So for me, this is just a mechanical challenge, like an invention channel challenge that I just want to pass. And I have no intention to ever bring this to market, right? So, but in any case, um, I th I'm actually happy that it works so well and that you are saying there might even be a practical use for it. Would this ever be a product? <laughs> just in case, that would be sufficient. So before it's time to say goodbye, I want to mention one thing and point out that we are not taking equipment that is um, absolutely needed for patients, right? Definitely because not. This, this is something that you use for training purposes, so it's no longer sterile. Uh, this would never be used uh, no. for treating a patient anymore. No. And you're going to take this again back home and, and use it for your your coaching and, and, and educational purposes. That's what I'm doing. Since we haven't destroyed it. No. <laughs> okay. So I think then, uh, since you're here, let's do some shooting. Of course. <laughs> because I have plenty of toys. <laughs> and uh, otherwise, I hope that you like this because that's it for today. Thanks and bye-bye. Bye-bye. 
So Simon is now at home and I had about a day and a half to enhance the contraption. My Ambu bag used arrived in the meantime and I also took a little bit of an old garden hose to connect the mask, like so. <laughs> um, changed the contraption a little bit to give it a more clean appearance. Uh, but I also what I did is, in order to convert this to a remote control rather than a continuous operation, I removed my little dial here for the speed control of the uh, battery drill and replaced it with this. And what this does is, it actually uses a lever to control the speed. So, and I developed a homemade foot pedal that is connected to the uh, control device with a little bit of a um, cable from a bike, from a bicycle. <laughs> and this now is a foot pedal that you are supposed to you know, put your foot on and then use it to remote control this. And you can also still have an influence on the speed, so you can go very slow, a little bit faster, or full speed. <laughs> and of course the idea is to put it down and then use both hands to attach the mask to the face of the patient and use the foot pedal to give him a few breath takes and then go on and massage the heart and then go back and give him two more pumps like so yeah i, I do think that now this has actually a medical potential purpose even though of course it has to it would have to go through official approval and all this which you will probably never get so it's an emergency only device but i think it has some kind of uh, application in the medical field in a total emergency situation unfortunately that does not help the corona patients since corona patients usually still can breathe on their own so they need some professional device as assistance this would only make some sense if you use it for somebody who has a cardiac arrest or maybe a stroke, that could be. But in any case, I think I mastered the mechanical challenge. I think this now has some kind of purpose and I'm using just wood and a little bit of uh, parts that you can get anywhere plus a battery drill. <laughs> Okay, and I always wanted to find out how it feels to actually, you know, get air from a device like this. So, I put it on. Alright. I can already say that it smells a little bit like moldy garden hose. <laughs> but I have to say that, you know, they say it's very unpleasant and uncomf uncomfortable because you have to take a breath even if you don't want to. That is not true. The pressure is actually so low that if you don't want to take a breath, you're not taking one. So this is actually, you have to be completely relaxed to allow the air to get into your system. And therefore, I don't think it's bad at all. But of course, it's very easy to get attuned to a given rhythm, I think, if you need the air. You know, you just have to relax and follow the pressure from the machine. So I think it's completely exaggerated to say that it's super uncomfortable to be connected to a thing like this. It isn't. <laughs> 